it is the biggest day. But it's still Spurs Day. We still talk Spurs every day at 7 o'clock. We call it the Silver and Black. We thank those that are subscribed, and here we sit. Uh, a nice day off. Um, they get the Memphis Grizzlies coming up. They're rounding out what has been the longest homestand in the NBA this season. You know, they get that because of the long February rodeo road trip. But the Every expect- game played at home. Right. Every single one. Uh, the expectation was a little bit more. But, you know, in, in hindsight, and I think Coach Popovich made a great point of uh, talking about his team because while the victories haven't been there, we do need to be uh, cognizant that there has been improvements. They're not getting blown out anymore. There's been several games in a row where they have fought to the finish. They didn't win, which in the grand process of things, that just adds to the potential of ping pong balls in the big hopper. So it's hard to be mad at them because they, no matter what they do from here on out, it's all about draft picks and strategizing how they're going to improve the team. So they have gotten better. And while the turnovers will continue to be a problem until these kids get older and they get a little bit more of a, a well, I'm not going to get on Trey, but a little bit more, some, some more guidance, some little senior leadership for a better term. They're going to continue that. But defensively, you know, all this talk about Wimby and his, you know, whether he deserves defensive player of the year, and he does. The defense on its own is getting better. And there's something about the style of Pop's defense. And I don't, I've been watching this defense for 20 years. I don't understand it. 25 years. I don't understand Pop's defense. And I don't pretend to be an NFL, uh, NBA expert to get the, the rotational methods behind the Spurs. It's, it's master's level stuff. I don't understand. It, and I don't pretend to. But it takes a year to learn. I mean, it, it took LaMarcus a year. Everybody who gets here says where I'm supposed to be. And I think yeah, we're starting I, to see it. I think not that it's easy to understand Pop's offensive philosophy, but it's it's easier to see. I mean, right? right. Like it's and, easier and, to, and, to and, kind and, of absorb. Right, and it's established by the talent you've got. You get the floppy. You get the choices that they're running now. That You know, 5-0 and 5-4 down, that's a long time ago. And he's adopted it, but you get it. Defense, I don't understand. I think that it's also been difficult to get a proper gauge on because they've always had a baller, right? Like they've always had somebody right. who can who – can, they've had Bruce or Kawhi, um, obviously now Wimby. I mean, like they've always kind of had somebody who can just a eliminate. Glove, a lockdown right, dude. Exactly. Um, and so it's hard to kind of evaluate who they are from a, a team defensive standpoint because they've never – and I say this – not in a criticizing sort of way, but they've never had to be that kind of team. You know, they've always been able to say like, hey, go go neutralize this dude. Uh, by the way, just very quickly, did you see um, on the subject of defense, did you, on, uh, in Kawhi, did you see James Harden, uh, the, the clip of him last night? Uh, no. He, did um, he dished it to Kawhi and then ran up and contested his shot. Like, uh, like <laughs> it was, it was very strange um, what happened. Um, he, he dished it to Kawhi down near the baseline, and then Kawhi put up a three. But James Harden tried to block it. It was really, really weird. <laughs> Why uh, did we did we get I, a reason? I, have no, I haven't seen an explanation for this, but um, it was a weird thing that had Twitter. Um, I, I'll send it to oh, you. Oh, right I'm, I'm watching it right now. Thanks. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, what what was that? So um, what the, for, and it works. <laughs> yeah, he got an altered he, shot stat. He was the one who made the pass. Like that's what's really weird about it. Anyway. Um, so it's nice to see the waters calming a little bit or, or the water stabilizing feels like our, our nausea on the boat is, is subsiding mm-hmm. and we're able to kind of enjoy things a little bit now, but it's, it's obviously all led by Wimby. I mean, you know, Jeremy's playing some solid defense and, and that's great to see, but th- this is from a defensive standpoint, it's going to be the Wimby show from here on out. I mean, I don't know that it really matters how much team defense they're able to play just because he's such an intimidating force on his own when we look at the uh the near future i just don't see a lot of wimby in april you mean like i think i think we're winding this sucker down and while i don't think they're just gonna say he's played his 65 and he's done i think we're gonna find out that he's got a nagging injury well yeah Yeah, something that's been bothering him for weeks that they're just gonna let him get healed uh, if you're a real conspiracy theorist, 
maybe they told him right before Luca hooked him the other night, like, okay, lay lay the foundation, start start favoring that ankle a little bit. Um, so he's at sixty one games, right? So he's got to reach sixty five. There are three left in this quote unquote homestand. Then they're at Utah. The after that have five remaining home games. How many? What what number do you think he hits? I think he hits like I think seven. seventy is a a good number. And I think you know if the the Spurs are smart, he'll play at home. I don't think we'll see him again on any kind of back to back. So you can just go ahead and X those out. And I think if it's a uh, a road two and three, I don't think even that second of the road I would I would put him up. So so they have two uh, road trips left with back or with with consecutive games. On you, you talked about April. On April the second, they're at Denver, and then they have a little bit of a break, and they don't play again until April the fifth in New Orleans. So, to your point, maybe he doesn't play against the Pelicans. Comes back. There's that home game against the Sixers, and that might be when he goes on ice. I, I just feel like I treat him like he's my uh, uh, number two starter in baseball. You get four you've, days. You've come this far. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you can't. You know, you you've. You've you've already you're halfway into the code red. You're more than halfway. You know what I'm saying? Like you've you've got to finish what we started here in terms of getting through this season with with his experience and getting the next season with him fully held. I mean, you already have to. I wouldn't say risk because it's not not something the team is doing, but you have to you know tolerate him playing in the Olympics, and that's you know a whole different thing in and of itself. So you don't need to put any more wear on t- wear and tear on him. That's then that is absolutely necessary. He's locked up rookie of the year as much as we want him to win defensive player of the year. I don't think anything can realistically happen over the next, you know, the remainder of the regular season that would help him out. Do you know what the odds are on defensive player? Of the year? I would say they're climbing by the day. Um, so four to one. DraftKings ha- has Rudy Gobert at minus six hundred. Minus six hundred. Wemby is at plus four hundred. Oh, so he's a long way away. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, it's just, just it's not going to happen. Yeah, and that's frustrating, but. It's best to make your peace with it. They don't even have, as I'm looking here, by the way, they don't even have rookie of the year as an available bet anymore. Like it's it's that foregone of a conclusion. Uh, as we head into the tournament, and we know uh, some of the things that the Spurs definitely tried to or need as they head into next season. Now, tis the season to watch, guys. Um, I think if you're a, a Spurs fan looking for immediate help, you better be paying attention to Kentucky. There's two guys on that team, uh, Reed Shepard and Rob uh, Dillingham. Uh, I was a Dillingham guy. I'm kind of out on him now. I'm also out on another guy that had been mentioned a couple of times. I saw him play last night in Colorado. Uh, Jalen Williams, a little brother. Mm -hmm. Uh, Cody Williams. Uh, Cody, well, I'm not out, um, but he is so far away from being NBA ready. I mean, he's, he's four years away. He's got a lot of talent, but what the Spurs are chasing uh, and the time and the clock, if Wimby wasn't quite as good as he is, I think he might have been a legitimate choice, a legitimate first-round draft pick, a top-ten kind of guy for them, but he's far from prepared to be an NBA guy. So I'm I'm out on him. I, I, I think that he is a definite good guy to get, but he's a, a three-year, small minutes a lot of time in the G League kind of draft pick. No, not I'm out on him. To me, as I sit today, and if I'm if I was uh Brian Wright, I'd be watching Reed Shepard closely. Closely. Uh he and uh connect from Tennessee. Cause that's the thing that I think the Spurs can fix the quickest through the draft. What they need that they can fix quicker than anything else is shooting. Mm-hmm. You can you can find jump shots, you can find a dude. That can hit a jumper um, in a draft. You can't find on on a regular basis point guards that are ready to lead. You can't on a regular basis basis find you know power forwards that are ready to defend. But you can find jump shooters. You can get them, and you can get them, and they can pay you immediate dividends. So I, I like the Reed Shepherd look. I, I would be following him pretty closely. Um, the schedule for today uh, will lend itself to. Uh, Watching those guys. Uh, let me pull up today's schedule. We have uh, early on Michigan, Miss- Mississippi the first State. First game is is going to be great. Yeah, the- um, see, I'm I'm coming around on your take that this is the best day of the year because it is. They stagger everything. You know what I mean? Like it's so great to just kind of 
over and over and over. Like, you know, it just never ends. And that's the best part of it all. Um, but if you're abandoning Dillingham, I'm not. You know, I, I just think that he is more of a scoring type, and I would be perfectly happy to draft him. But if I could have the perfect guy for the Spurs right now, as it sits before, you know, camps and, and uh, the the all of the different uh, pre-draft workouts, Reed Shepard to me looks like a guy that fits a lot of the categories that the Spurs are chasing. He can play a couple of positions, but he is a guy who will bring an, an immediate court stretching three. Um, and a fair amount of savvy at that coming out of Kentucky. There, Kentucky goes off today. Uh, they're playing Oakland, but Oakland's from Pittsburgh. Not that Oakland, but the other Oakland. Uh, the Golden Bears, I believe they are. And that'll be a CBS game tipping at 6-10, a game you can watch. Uh, uh, you can listen live here. Uh, well, on our brother. We're not on sounding promo, uh, signing pronouns. KZDC 1250 will have all the tournament stuff as we are live. But we will be live out at Twin Peaks. You can watch it live with us. Texas uh, tips today as well. Uh, nobody on the Texas roster is look uh, on the Spurs thing. But you might want to pay attention to that as they tip at 550. That's a TNT game. Uh, a game going off in Charlotte, North Carolina. I did not him, pick no. Texas. I, I'll be free there. I took Colorado State to, as a 10. I, I did too. Uh, but quickly on the Dillingham note, the only reason I'm opposed to him is I'm so all in on Trey Young. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't want anything to happen that would compromise that. So no offense to Dillingham. And I think he'll be an awesome NBA player. But my, all my eggs are in. On, I, I don't want any. I don't want the Spurs to fall into a situation where they think like they can draft and build and whatever. And they don't have to go get the all-star to pair with Wendy. No, you have to go get the all-star now. I, so I don't want anything to, you know, preclude them from pursuing the Trey Young type, whoever that ultimately winds up being. And, and I completely agree with that. That is the first and foremost immediate fix for this Spurs team is to go get a superstar who can just go win games on his own. And with that in mind, you know, I, I see a lot of the, the, you know, the end of season talk about Trey Jones and maybe Chase and Tyus, his brother, up there with the bullet. No need to do that. I think Trey Jones, I, you know, I've gotten a better... I've gotten a bad reputation for not liking him. Uh, over the last couple of games, he he what too. What do you mean a bad reputation? Uh, well, I, I do him. like him. I, I I was mad at him on one of his better games because you know there's other things that need to be done. There, you know, it wasn't about winning; it was about improvement. And you were mad that he didn't make Wimby better. Yes, that was and that were, and that that was well, a ridiculous be, thing to be mad about. No, you it's going to continue day, to be my issue with him. Day. I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to hammer because his job is solely to set the table solely to get other guys going. That's his job. There's a reason why he's here and he's getting better at that. It's um, it's sad that you can't own up to the fact that you are a Trey hater. It's okay. You know what I mean? Like we all, we all have things we want back.